There is no top comment yet, so I had to come up with something myself. And what better way to start this channel than by writing hello world, but in the most ridiculously overcomplicated way possible. Not because this channel is about making things difficult for no reason, but because I had the freedom to do anything for the sake of the first video. And this just seemed fun. Now, could I have done this in one line of code? Yes, but did I? Instead, I went full chaotic engineer mode. So let's go. Printing hello world is normally as simple as this. But that's boring, isn't it? So let's break it. Instead of Python's built-in print function, I'm going to redefine it for absolutely no reason. So first, I'll need the system module, which is called sys, I'll import that. Now, let's make a new function called cursedPrint. Instead of using Python's normal print, this will take whatever we type, convert it into a string, and then manually write it to the console. And now we just overwrite Python's print function with the cursed version. Now, if I try to print hello world, it works exactly the same, but it's now way more complicated. Okay, that was unnecessary. What if we brought AI into the mix? So instead of typing hello world like a normal person, I'm going to train an entire neural network to generate it for me. For that, I'll need TensorFlow and NumPy, so let's import those. Those modules are like the most used in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Next, we need training data. Now, normally AI models use thousands or even millions of data points, but I'm going to train this on exactly one. Let's make an X array. This is our input. It's just a single value, which is zero. And now the Y array, which is the output we want. Instead of numbers, it is just a text, hello world. Now we need a model. I'm going to use Keras' sequential model, which lets us using stack layers on top of each other. Let's add the first layer. I'll make it a dense layer, which is just a normal neural network layer. I will give it 10 neurons. And for the activation function, let's go with ReLU. Now another layer, another 10 neurons, again using ReLU. And finally, the output layer. Since we are predicting a string, I'll just set this to one neuron. And for the activation function, let's use linear, because why not? Next, we compile the model. We need an optimizer and a loss file. I'll just go with Adam for the optimizer and mean squared error for the loss. Even though that makes no sense for text. Now it's time to train the AI. Usually training a model takes hours, but since we have literally one data point, I will just set it to 10 epochs. And now let's make a prediction. I'll pass in X and see if the AI has learned anything at all. Let's print the result. Oh, I guess GPT lied to me. Let's see if we can make it work. First, I'll try Googling. Uh, I guess we just copied too much information about the error. Let's try with less. Nothing again. You know what? I'm just gonna ask it to GPT. It is his problem anyway. It actually gave me something this time. It is taking too much time, I guess. We're gonna get something. This time it output a single E, which is not close to our expected output. Let's ask again. Dear GPT, AI generated only a character E. Where is the rest? The reason you're only getting one character as output. Thank you, GPT. Don't even bother. Let's try again with the new code. Hello. Whoa, whoa. Now that's interesting. I think we should thank the GPT. So All that... right, AI is cool, but it didn't actually output correctly. So we may need more advanced technology. What if we use quantum computing? First, we'll need Qiskit, so let's import it. Now we need to convert hello world into binary, since quantum computers don't understand normal text. I'm going to use this website to convert ASCII characters to binary. I will use VS Code shortcuts to convert those binary numbers into strings. Now let's create a quantum simulator so we can actually run this. Time to loop each character and process them one by one. 
For each letter, we create eight qubit quantum circuit. Now we need to encode the bits into quantum circuit. Since Qiskit uses little ending notation, we will reverse the order of the bits and apply an X gate wherever there is a one. Next, we measure all qubits so we can read the final output. Now we transpile and execute the circuit on our simulator. And then let's check the measured output. We will take the most common bit string and convert it back to text. Finally, let's print the final quantum generated message. It actually printed hello world, but I really don't know if that was logical. But believe me, quantum computing isn't just made for printing hello world. It is like using mouse as screwdriver. I had to talk to ChatGPT for a time just to bring the output as close as to hello world. So I won't bother to explain the code in more detail because I don't know it as a well. mission accomplished. So let me introduce you to a new language. Brain fuck. A language designed specifically to hurt your soul. So brain fuck only has eight comments. That's it. No functions, no variables, just pure chaos. Now let's type out the brain fuck equivalent of print hello world. Here it is. Yeah, this looks like a broken microwave display, but believe it or not, this prints hello world. Here is what's happening. These squares represent brain fuck's memory tape. It is the only storage it has. This pointer is how BrainFuck keeps track of where it is on the tape. This tiny triangle is the only thing BrainFuck can move and it is about to do a lot of work. At the bottom of the screen, the code appears. It's a mess of symbols and we will see how this code produces hello world up. In BrainFuck, plus increments the current memory set. Each plus adds one to the first memory set. And then the loop begins with the left bracket. The loop will continue until a right bracket is seen in the code. For this particular code, we see a double for this loop the spreads values across multiple memory cells by moving back and forth between them. The animation shows the pointer moving to different cells, adding numbers, also a loop structure repeating until cell 0 reaches 0, at which point the loop ends. By the end of this process, several memory cells are filled with specific numbers, representing ASCII characters. In BrainFuck, that operation prints the current memory cells value as a character. The pointer moves to the correct cells, output each character, and the text appears on the screen. Finally, we have reached 72, which corresponds to age in ASCII table. And in the next cell, we have now 101, which corresponds to E, 108, which is L, and we output it twice. And O is so close to L, we can achieve it by adding 3. 32 is the space character. We need capital W now, and we have that as well. And the remaining characters are output correctly, as you can see. It took me so long to create this animation, but it actually worked it. I'm getting used to my name and I really liked it. All right, I am in my second week of editing and creating this video. Imagine how video editing is so difficult. I had another idea of printing Hello World, but I'm going to stop here. For the next video, I will create or implement the most liked comment as the channel name suggests. So please enter your ideas below, but not like can you build X from scratch. I need you to code Amazon, N -A -S -A. Facebook, SpaceX. Code C programming language from scratch. And also, since this is a new channel, I would be grateful if we start slowly After creating the next video. After one week, I published this video you are watching. Until next time, code safe.